Yo, 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 this is Big Talk, Big Game, man. Yeah, we know what I'm saying. Yeah. We know we're a little late, man. But, hey, be ready, be set, be ready to go. We Big clubbing. Talk, Big Game, man, is about to come to you live, man, just in a few more minutes. We're getting everything set up for you. But, hey, Big Talk, Big Game is here to stay. We ain't going nowhere on every Thursday. You feel me? Chill. Big talk, big game. This is your boy D-Rail. And I go by the name of Lee. What up? Hey, man, we back at it, man. Another Thursday, October 28th. Big talk, big game. Each and every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome, welcome to another show, baby. So today, you know what I'm saying, we're going to kick this off right like we always do. You know what I'm saying? Today is once again a national day. And I don't know why they What up, Toya? I don't know why they made this day the national day on a Halloween weekend. And I don't understand this. Well, I guess oh, I. God, period, well, I guess. Why I, you look like Braxton over there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess it'll be this because you know what I'm saying. Like if you were in a Halloween spirit, it's supposed to be dark. So you know what I'm saying. I guess it'll be just right. It's National Chocolate Day. Hey, come on now. National Chocolate Day. National Chocolate Day. What up, Gerard? It is a blessing. It melt in your mouth, not in your hand. What up, clowns? Oh, Shut up. <laughs> hey, Gerard, what up, man? Hey, man, we ain't no clowns, man. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you right now, we're in the Halloween spirit. You feel me? Halloween spirit. But, man, it's National Chocolate Day, man. So, everybody, you know what I'm saying, in life, chocolate candy. I know I love me some chocolate. Or chocolate women. Woo, my favorite. Hey. Whatever you want to do, you but know what I'm saying? Like, you got to make sure these chocolate women ain't got no nuts in it. <laughs> 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 you are damn right about that. You are damn right. 
But man, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that tunes in every Thursday, man, like we said, man, we definitely appreciate y'all loyalty. Appreciate y'all always watching and staying faithful to our show. We definitely trying to make this show go global. Definitely trying to go big and make this as big as we can make it. You feel me? So help us out with this shit and subscribe to the YouTube page is what you do to help us grow, baby. So subscribe to Big Talk Big Game on YouTube and Instagram. You For feel real. me? Definitely follow us and definitely subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bro, we you know got some big things coming. You I'm don't want to ask. Hey. You don't even know. And I'm trying to tell you, like we always say at every show, if you ain't on the train now, you're going to wish you was when that time hey. comes. Hey. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to wish you was on this train. You feel me? But we got a lot of things going on today on this today's show, man. You know what I'm saying? We, of course, got, you know what I'm saying, some topics that we definitely want to discuss that's going on in the world today. You know, definitely want to discuss that. We also got who's capping, you know, coming That's back. Up. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have it last week, but we definitely got a who's capping coming back this week. Yeah, I know it. You know what I'm saying? We got Mr. Lee's rank them. This shit be so damn hilarious. This shit be this. Hey. It, it, it's, it's well much needed for this damn rank them. You know what I'm saying? Well much needed. God damn it. It's well much needed. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying? We, of course, got a special appearance by award winning Deontay Bowden. You feel oh, me? Yeah. Deontay Bowden coming to the building, man, to kick it with Big Talk, Big Game. And then, you know what I'm saying, lastly, a lot of niece, you know what I'm saying, you still got a chance to win the Big Talk, Big Game swag along with that mini versus. You feel me? Yeah, I feel like I got a doozy for y'all today. Oh, yeah? I feel like I got a doozy, okay. you know what I'm saying? We, we having a good show, man. Y'all got to stay like, you know around. Like it's the whole show. You feel stay me? around, hang around. And also, you? while we at it, man, listen, we want to give a shout-out to Keys Saucin because she oh. is catering tonight's event. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The food is good, y'all. We over here grubbing. I'm waiting on one of y'all to do it so we can eat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so you know what I'm saying? So, just to let you know what she brought, she brought some glazed chicken on top of yellow rice. Then she had some Philly chicken tortellini. What do you call Grilled chicken. Philly. Philly. Philly chicken. Philly chicken wrapped in macaroni cheese shells. No, no, no don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. <laughs> Philly chicken stuffed shells. Okay, with okay. With mashed potatoes and broccoli. Okay, my then bad. we had salmon bites with mm-hmm. fries mm-hmm. and a jerk chicken quesadilla with rice. And listen. Mm. This, hey, jerk, this hey. jerk chicken quesadilla, again, y'all, it's butter. Hey, you, you you just heard what's in the plate. E. Cal just explained it to you. You just heard what's in the plate. What's up, Miss T? I see you. You just heard what's in the plate. You feel me? That's probably why we late. We've been over here eating. Sorry. <laughs> no, but this is Keys Saucin'. One more time. You Keys Saucin'. That's K-E-Y-Z-S-A-U-C-I-N. Keys Saucin', man. She caterer. She cool people. And this food good, y'all. So check her out. <laughs> check her out at Keys Saucin' on IG. Dang, we got to get a picture with us. We sure did. We'll get one. We'll get, we'll, we'll get one. 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 Ask you know about saying? the sauce. Hey, but definitely want to get right in on tour, you know what I'm saying, before our guests get here. Braves, they made it to the World Series. That ain't in there. Of course they did. And they what made, you say? They made it to the World Series. What you say? They made it to the World Series. They made it to the World Series. Hey, I can't even Shout know. out to the Braves, baby. I can't, I, I, can't, I can't even lie, man. They did something that I ain't think they was going to do, you know. <laughs> but now it's time to win it, though, because the Falcons got there and they couldn't get the job done. So now it is time to win it. So the series is tied 1-1. One, one. They come Why back to the ATL the to play again too. tomorrow here in the ATL. And let's see if ATL can go ahead and win these two at home. You know, let's see if we they see can go ahead and win it. Can, they can see if we can do. Don't celebrate too early, though. <laughs> We got three games in Atlanta. We're going to go take it one game at a time. To us straight out. Don't get no, don't celebrate too early. What up, Shea Butter? What up, Talisa? You know what I'm saying? Definitely don't say no celebrate too early. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I think I thought this would be good for you, Mr. E. Cal. Yeah, because I fucking love, love it. Can, they released a new flavor. New flavor? Filled with potato chips. Oh, they messing it up now. <laughs> they running out of shit. <laughs> they running out of shit. <laughs> They pulling the Oreos. You know, Oreos be pulling all them flavors yeah, out. that nigga said, what can we do? I don't fucking know. Put some chips in it. I'm going to put some fucking chips in it. Just because you yelled at me like that. They got a new flavor filled with potato chips. What the hell? What the? Potato chips that and don't even, chocolate? That don't even go together, man. It go together, but it don't go in Reese's. Chocolate chips? Yeah. 
I mean, you can actually cut it up and you'll see the potato chips is in there. That's gross. You can definitely see it in there. It's going to be soggy by the time it leave the factory, get to the store, and you <laughs> open it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically peanut butter and chocolate potato. covered potatoes. Yeah. Fries dipped in ketchup. <laughs> not ketchup. You know, no, 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 you know uh fries dipped in chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Gross. Wow. Yeah, that's not a sound, good one. That don't sound good to me. What <laughs> else we got? Man, we also got, you know what I'm saying, uh y'all heard about Jelani Day, the person that had they found the body with the organs taken out. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all heard what they said the cause of death was? What? Drowning. Yeah, they say drown, but they don't know how the organs got. They don't know. But, all and, and that's the question. It's like you know what I'm saying. Like they found that it's drowning was the cause of his death. They don't know the circumstances though behind it. They, but they can only. They really that. ain't said why his organs were still out of his body though. But they what, said it was but they don't know why. They don't know how the drowning happened and none of that. They just the autopsy is just gonna tell you what happened to his. You know how he died. It's crazy, man. Right, it's crazy. It's like, you know, they, they, they definitely got a lot of answers, you know what I'm saying, questions to answer about how still the organs came out of the body, though. You know, definitely got to answer that question. Shea Butter, you know what I'm saying, today is Happy National Chocolate Day. Just to let you know, Happy National Chocolate Day. Chocolate Day. Chocolate. <laughs> Experts have said, and I just found this out, I didn't even know they had this out there. There have been cases of a flesh-eating STD. I heard about that. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> a flesh-eating STD. Jesus. I had to look it up. I'm like, man, what the fuck are they talking about flesh-eating? The shit actually eats itself through your skin. Hold on. It eats itself. Oh, wow. Got to be careful. It out here, eats boy. itself through your skin, dog. It eats itself through your skin. So it, yes. it eats through your skin. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Okay. So why is eating itself or whatnot? It's actually trying, it's expanding and actually, you know what I'm saying, trying to get up out your skin as well. It eats that itself is, through your skin. That is different, nigga. Man, I said, what the fuck? Like, how did they, they just reproducing everything, making shit, you know what I'm saying? It was like, niggas strap up. That's all I can say. <laughs> niggas strap uh, up. You don't I'm even tell know. You. We don't even know. Niggas how strap that, up. How does that even happen? How's it, how y'all got new ones? <laughs> right. You know it just came out. Like, like it's a new movie or something, or a new album. Man, that day, that STD, Flesh Eating STD, going to be out here next Friday, man. Ladies, Let you know, man. You be ready. Eight out, you could be getting eight out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Coming soon to man. a health clinic near you. I'm over here like, what the hell was going Dude's on? Dude's out here getting a salad toss. Hey, <laughs> niggas, hey, salad stay strapped, back. nigga. <laughs> nigga, stay strapped. I'm telling you right now, strap twice. If it's you got scary to. out here. It's Halloween, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> And, and lastly, but not least, you know, so I definitely want to talk about the Mike Tomlin situation. Have y'all heard about how they came at him, Mike Tomlin? No. Well, basically, you know what I'm saying, the, the NFL, and, you know what I'm saying, the media is coming to him and asking him, has he ever considered going to college to be a coach? He was like, what the fuck kind of question is that? That's a step down. He said, have you asked Sean Payton to any read these questions? Just yeah, because yeah. I'm a black man and I ain't having a good season with the Steelers, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to ask me that type of damn question? Yeah, yeah. I think what happened was somebody, it was like a rumor out there. Somebody said, you know, looking at, he's looking at colleges or something. Somebody's starting stuff and media just running with it. And he was like, listen, man, I ain't with that. Right, right. You definitely yeah, it don't make sense. He's that. never had a losing season with the Steelers. And, if, and, you, and you know the Steelers in NFL history has only had a total of three coaches. And they've been around Period. forever. Mm. They've only had three coaches. So you you with the Steelers, you're going to stay. That now, how many secure. coaches has the Jets had? Well, let me think. We had two in Let's one not year. talk about it. <laughs> then we just hired another one this year. <laughs> Y'all had three, with, three within two years. So it's like, so that's what I'm saying. That's a good-ass organization. You're going to have three coaches in, the, in, the, in all the Super Bowls combined. And before that, that you only have three total coaches? <clears throat> Nigga, that's a good uh, that's a good ass franchise. Def right there, right, Shea Butter. Stand up, Thomas. Stand up. Oh, yeah, that's Shea Butter team right there. I ain't gonna say let's go, Steelers, but I'm just gonna say, you know what I'm saying? Stand up, though. Stand up, stand up. Man, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely want to tell you, man, you can always watch Big Talk, Big Game each and every Thursday on all social media platforms on the DWC Radio Live, Facebook, YouTube, yeah. Instagram. We yep. definitely, you know what I'm saying? You can watch us at Big Talk, Big Game, and Instagram. Definitely keep yeah, up with yeah. our page at Big Talk, Big Game on YouTube as well. 
you know, definitely, you know what I'm saying, let us know right. how you know what I'm saying, <laughs> any comments that you got going on or whatnot. And listen, we every, everywhere, man, so follow us on IG so we can keep you posted on where we going to be. Post. You feel me? We're going to keep you posted on everywhere we going to be, everything we going to be doing, man. We trying to get out here, man. Hey, and we supporting black businesses just like Key Saucin. So if y'all got a business, y'all want to get on, we want to talk about something, you got something you can promote, holler at us, man. Big Talk, Big Game Podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on IG, man. We about to do some new things, man. So stay tuned. Hey, man, and you can also call us live each and every Thursday at 404 404- Six zero three zero four one four. Once again, that number today is four zero four six zero three zero four one four. At the bottom of your screen, check it. Ah. You feel me? You feel me, man? You definitely got a chance to win that raffle, man. Today, man, for Big Talk Big Game Swag, man. All you gotta do is subscribe to the YouTube page, show us that you subscribe, and then call in and answer one simple question. And if you get the question right today, you definitely will walk away. Was a big talk, big game swag. You feel swag. me? Definitely walk away with a big talk, big game swag. Let's man, you know what I'm saying? It. So we definitely gonna get right on to the show as well, man. We're gonna see what you know what I'm saying, Mr. E Cow got to talk about with this who capping. You know what I'm saying? Definitely see if he can stump us this time. Most be- definitely. Because, because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I guarantee victory today. Mm. I'm locking it in. Okay. Guaranteed. I guarantee victory today. Well, I'm going to make it a little easier on you because I only have one story. Mm. <laughs> I guarantee victory today. You got a 50-50 chance. One story. <laughs> you got a 50-50 chance. Let's put the camera on them, y'all. Uh, all right. Let's put the camera on them. One, there two, one, one, two. There we go. There we go. There we go. One, two, on. one, two. All right. Anyway, <laughs> welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to this part of the show called Who Cap. Thank you for tuning in where I give you the story, you hear the glory, and you got to tell me if it's cap or fact. Now, in most times of the segment, I give you two stories, but I'm going to be a little special today give you one. Uh, I'm going to give you the title, one sentence from the full story, and you have to let me know if it's true or not. Okay? Okay. We got it. Let's All get it. right. So, the title of this first story is called Busting In Laughing. Mm. You know, not busting out laughing. But right, right. Busting right. In busting Laughing. Busting In Laughing. Laughing, yeah. Now, couple discovered a thief in their home Saturday after a man told a joke. And the thief upstairs laughed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cap or no? Say that one more time. <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> Couple discovered a thief in their home Saturday after a man told a joke and heard a laugh upstairs. Cap or no cap? Ah, uh, so hold up. <laughs> Read that one more time. All right. I can see the screen up. Couple discovered a thief in their home Saturday after a man told a joke and heard a laugh upstairs. Cap, cap or fat? I'm gonna give it to the man that got the guaranteed victory tonight. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to see what he's talking about. <laughs> ah, let's see here. Cap or no cap? Well, see, I can actually see that happening. But with E. Cal, you just don't know, man. Like, you just don't know. But uh, That's why he's the perfect one for this segment, man. It's, I can see somebody in the closet. <laughs> Bust out laughing at Why you crazy? Hey? You, you know, that shit funny in the mud. You know what? You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I think that's true. I'm locking it in. You locking it in? I'm locking it in. I think that's Ooh, true. Okay. I think that's true. There's no cap on that. No I cap. think that's true. Okay. I had to really think Sweet about it, but I think that's true. Would audience, you, audience, help me see? out. What Help me out, hey, y'all. Is it audience, cap? What you got, they, man? Is it cap or no say? cap? What, what y'all saying out there, man? Hey, we got uh, 
We got one Z Miss T said that's a fact. Hmm. One Z Missy T. So Darrell, you say it's you one say Z it's, underscore Missy T said that's a fact on IG. He you, said that's you a say fact. It's fact. Jerron said it's true. So nobody said it's cap, huh? Damn. He said it's true. I said I'm guaranteeing victory today. So if you better get on the, the, the train right now. I said it's true too. <laughs> you better get on the train right now. I'm saying it's true. I wanted I wanted to go against you and, and say cap, man, but I feel like it's true my damn self. So. Mmm. <laughs> Everybody saying true. Miss Bedell says it's true. Mrs. Bedell says it's true. You see right there? I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a, mm. That's crazy as hell, though. I want to hear the joke. So he downstairs. <laughs> so they, they downstairs. He upstairs. Because they heard, who the hell up there? They didn't even know he was down until he laughed. <laughs> Did you leave the TV on or, or what? <laughs> and he didn't laugh at the joke. Mm. I'm going to go against the rail today. Damn, everybody's saying true. I'm going to be a lone wolf in this. I'm going to say that's cap. I'm going cap. I'm going cap. Cap? Okay, so we got one cow. Because first of all, is he a thief? Because we don't know if he stole nothing yet. He a home invader. <laughs> I don't know. I'm t I'm playing I'm playing semantics. I'm going I'm going cap because everybody's saying true and I stands alone. All right. Well, in the case of the fact or cap segment today, <laughs> this story is 100% true. Ah! <laughs> yeah. I figured it was going to be yeah, true, it's too. Tr it's true. I had to go against the grain, though. <laughs> Damn! An Oak Hill community couple discovered a thief in their home Saturday after a man told a joke and heard a laugh up fast. I want to hit a joke. They should have put the joke in the story. They should have. They should have put the joke in the story. They should have. Because I know if you, you got to be a good reporter, you got to say, well, what the hell did you say to make that man laugh? Shout out uh, to Talisa for sending me that uh, story, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I be damned. <laughs> Notice she didn't give an answer. She was like, that's right, yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You could have put me up on game and said, <laughs> okay, I see what's going on now. Yeah, I see man. what's going on. Oh, y'all y'all having conversations without me now? Is that, that's what we doing? No, no. It was no just, I, okay, just, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, we're going to have a discussion when we get home. When I get home, we're going to have a discussion. Hey, do, uh, do y'all eat Twizzlers? Y'all think they're good? Uh, no, I don't. Say something to eat young. while you're watching the movie. Yeah. I Somebody feel, said... <laughs> I feel, I feel like it drives my mouth out. Somebody said Twizzlers, my mouth out. Twizzlers taste like cherry flavored HDMI cords. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Wow. Ah. Damn. Yo, they, they did, you hear, did you hear the answer to no, the No, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear the answer. Was I right? No, it was Cap. God damn it. No, nah, it was true. It was <laughs> I told you to guarantee them <laughs> victory. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to guarantee told you victory. That man bipolar. He was just upset. God damn it. This is the third time I never done. I told played. you, guarantee victory. I told you, guarantee victory. You feel me? Guarantee victory. 50-50 chance. I told you, it was guarantee victory. You feel me? Yes, sir. Man, we got Mr. Deontay Bolden, man, coming what? up next, man. So y'all definitely stay tuned, man. This is Big Talk, Big Game. We're going to take a quick IG. commercial break, man, and definitely come back to you, man. Once again. Yeah. This is Big Talk, Big Game. Yes, sir. Ski. Ah.
Looking for some entertainment that's gonna catch and keep your attention? Well, look no further. Big Talk, Big Game is that podcast for you. We got good music, non-stop laughter, and just a good time all around. Every Thursday from 7 p.m. Eastern to 8.30. We on all the major platforms. Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are heard. So make sure you tune in and catch myself, e Cal, D-Rail, and L-E-E Lee. Because if you want to be entertained, then tune in to Big Talk, Big Game. Looking for some entertainment that's going to catch and keep your attention? Well, look no further. Big Talk, Big Game is that podcast for you. We got good music, non-stop laughter, and just a good time all around. Every Thursday from 7 p.m. Eastern to 8.30. We on all the major platforms. Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and anywhere else podcasts are heard. So make sure you tune in and catch myself, e Cal, D-Rail, and L-E-E Lee. Because if you want to be entertained, then tune in to Big Talk, Big Game. Yo, Big Talk, Big Game is back, man. Like we oh, said, well, man, well, we well, definitely well, got well, a good back. show for y'all today, man. And definitely want to tell y'all that we got the one award-winning Mr. Deontay <laughs> Bowden in the building, y'all. Yeah! 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 You feel me? Now, I ain't going to lie to you, Deontay. I mean, I, didn't, I, I don't know how many titles you got, so I just said award-winning <laughs> and just left it at that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to let you tell the people, you know what I'm saying, like, what awards and break everything down as far as what you have won as far as being an award-winning person? Yeah, so um, I'm Deontay, a filmmaker, playwright, award-winning author, um, nominated as a, a award-winning playwright. Um, do many different things, DNA podcast, I have my own podcast. Um, I also have my own award show that's coming next year called the Bolden Awards. Okay. Um, so I'm doing a lot of different things, just creative and finding my different avenues and inspiring people through my art and creativity. There it is. Oh, there wow. It is, there it is. There it is. What, what got you into to this whole creative world? Like when you was in school, is it something that you've always been a part of? Or how yeah. did it start? Oh, yeah, I've always wanted to act. Um, so I've always been in the acting world. But um, I got into writing when I lived in Los Angeles for a few years. And mm. I was doing um, acting. And then someone told me that I should write because I had all these different ideas and creativity mm -hmm. because sometimes as an actor you're on other people's things but you're like I can do better than this I can write better right, than this absolutely. so it led me right. to want to write my own stuff and just create my own path because as an actor I think it's important to also create your own opportunities as well so that led me into the writing and then next thing you know after I did my play in 2019 here in Atlanta um, looking for love in all the wrong places, which sold out two shows. I was like, I want to start writing. Come on, flex on them then. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Sold out two shows. You yeah. know, you know. <laughs> that's like work. That's like work. Very <laughs> yeah. But what we did do, we sold out. You know, we got all the money. Hey, all the money we very humble expect. with it. You know what I'm saying? Don't just skim you know what I'm through that. Yeah, you know exactly. what sold out two shows. They gave How us, would you do uh, it? <laughs> Forty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> just our ad stuff. I mean, Oprah was interested, but you know, the deal wasn't right for me. You know what I'm saying? So. I see, I, I see, you know what I'm saying, you uh, look like you wrote books and stuff like that. Like, what actually got you into going from being a, alt, I mean, a, a film person to now getting into writing the books now? Um, it was just the story. Um, I don't know if you, well, um, I lost my brother in 2006. He had uh, oh, mus yeah. muscular dystrophy. Thanks, I appreciate it. And um, when he passed, um, I just felt like I wanted to kind of write and tell my story because a lot of people see, you know, what I post and a lot of my accomplishments, but they don't understand yeah. the story behind it. Right. And I also wanted to inspire people who are going through a difficult time that you can take your pain and use it for negative or you can use it for a positive and turn it into something great like God has allowed me to do. Um, so my first book was called Purpose Pains, where I talk about how I use my pain to push me towards my purpose, which is writing. And I found that in the midst of losing my brother. After I lost my brother in 2006, I actually wanted to take my own life because um, mm. we were so close and it was a difficult time for me. So I talk about that in my first book and really take people on the journey <coughs> of how I got where I'm at now. And then my second book is a children's book I wanted to write to bring awareness to children with disabilities. Because when my brother and I were growing up, 
a lot of kids didn't know how to interact with him because he was different and they treated him like he had this disease yeah. and it was it wasn't easy for him to make friends so my second book is a children's empowerment book for children with disabilities to let them know that it's okay to be different and embrace who you are there it is. Wow. There it is. Wow. That's, that's, that's deep, man. So that's was, deep. It, was it hard to transition from, you know, playwriting to book writing? Like, did you have to shift your mind or something like that? Yeah, I mean, the second book, I was able to tell the story, so it was almost like writing the script. But the first book, yeah, because I had to be very vulnerable. Um, mm-hmm. I can hide behind characters when I write characters, and a lot of my characters, I don't tell people when they come off crazy. I'm like, that's a little bit of me in there. <laughs> wow. But with a book, you know, a self-help book, you have to be vulnerable, and people know that it's about you. So it's kind of a different lane. Okay. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was going to ask you to, you know, not to get too much into it, but the trauma from, you know, potentially, you know, like you said, your loss and, you know, thinking what to do to spin that into a positive. Like, you, like that's a tough, that seems like a tough thing to do to go from, you know, I was so close to my brother, I want to take my own life to, I'm going <coughs> to write about it. You know what I'm saying? How did you dive into going from one to the other? Was that a yeah. tough transition? Or it was. Um, writing the book was very, um, it was vulnerable for me, and I had to really dig deep um, and talk about a lot of issues that I didn't want to. Because as men, we can be honest, we mm-hmm. suppress a lot of emotion. Absolutely. And when I lost my brother, I was trying to be there for everybody else. You know, my mom, who's also my manager, and a lot of other different people, but for me, it was uh, a time that I actually grieved. I can actually say that was a grieving process. Mm-hmm. And for when I lost my brother in 2006, I think it, I, I wrote this book in 2019. I guess I said that was 13 years of holding in a lot of, wow. you know, emotions mm-hmm. and, and feelings. Um, so, yeah, you go through emotions, especially when you're writing a book and you're being open and transparent about your own experiences. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, do you have um, other books in mind? Do you have like a slate of, okay, next year I'm doing this, like how, how do you set that up for your goal or you just like you feel it when you feel it? I feel it when I feel it with books, um, but I do feel another book is coming with a children's book because everybody's giving me ideas because um, I'm writing about these four children. So people are like, I want you to touch on this issue or that topic, but it'll come. I actually want to make Differently Abled a series of books. Yeah, tell, tell, them, tell them about the book and where they can find it. Like, if you don't know, the, the book is called Differently Able, right? Yeah. Differently Able. Um, and let, let people know where they can find it or how they can reach you so we can kind of, they can be looking while we're doing this. Interview. Yeah, so Differently Able, it's available on Amazon, um, Barnes & Noble website. You can also go to my website and purchase your personalized signed copy at www.deonteboldenproductions.com, and that's D-E-O-N-T-E, last name B-O-L-D-E-N, productions.com. And I sign a copy, I mail them off every Friday, so, you know, and I will personally sign a copy for you. Oh, we got a, we, we got a question by one of the viewers. They want to know where can they see your plays? Um, so there's the Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places is coming February, so maybe I'll invite me back closer to that time. Oh, absolutely. Valentine's okay. Day weekend. Okay. And okay. Listen, absolutely. I know the Super Bowl is going on, but my play is better than the Super Bowl. Right. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Like you said, his play is better than the Super Bowl. You feel me? Yeah, you so feel you me? watch both. Now you're in the audience, but you need to pay attention to the play. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Super Bowl isn't for everybody. Money, so. so if you come and you ain't you watching the Super Bowl, I still got your money. <laughs> but February 12th. Now for real? Yeah. February. You play that <laughs> February 12th and 13th, and I'm actually uh, going through the casting process now. Um, oh, okay. Eleven all the wrong places. And it's basically about these group of professionals in the medical field. They have everything they want, money, but they're infatuated with the idea of being in love. And because of that, they rush into these various relationships that are not meant for them. And it just tells the story that when you're patient and you wait on true love, then it will find you. Um, and if not, you pay the price and you end up being one of these characters in the play. So uh, is this based off you too? Because you said the characters are uh, looking for love and all. Hey, Deontay Bowden looking for love in all the wrong Deontay places. Deontay Bowden, you feel me? Deontay Bowden, man. Hey, you, you say uh, you were in the casting process. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, actually, we, we, actually, we actually met on the set. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. casting for a couple of roles. You can find that on my website okay. as well. But um, okay. the tickets will go on sale in December, and we start rehearsals the top of December. Yeah, because I mean, I think it was uh, you had to push your play back for the COVID, right? Yeah. yeah I, I, saw it on, yeah, yeah. I saw it on there. We, we started on the summer, and then it kind of got a little rough because people were catching COVID, and it was just yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. And we'll need that. Yeah, COVID was just acting reckless right now. I can't wait till she go away. Yeah. But, you know what? And, sp- and speaking about that, because I could see that, you know what I'm saying? You're a pretty deep, deep man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You like to have deep conversations. Like face base, because I see you know the T is across, right? Yeah. So, so, I, so I actually got two questions. One about what you just said about the COVID. 
What is your thoughts about it? Do you think that COVID is here to stay for the rest of our lives, or do you think eventually it's going to go away and we're going to be back to where we was before COVID got here? I don't think we will ever be back to where we were because I think we've changed a lot, but I do believe it will eventually go away. Um, I think we just have to do what we need to do at this moment so we can allow it to go away. But, you know, it just shows a lot of stuff. I think COVID has just shown how, um, you know, society is when we ha- – when we s- we don't like to follow instructions. We don't yeah. like to follow directions. Yeah. And we make things more difficult than what it should be. Um, because if you look at other countries and places, you know, they're getting their stuff under control, but we still dealing with the same old thing. So I think it'll eventually go away. Um, I think we just got to push past and get through it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. And then as far as my other question, I mean, because I definitely want to applaud you for being a black man, you know what I'm saying, running your own thing, doing your own thing. Most definitely. Taking all control. Through, you know what I'm saying? You're you, you, you the leader. You're the big dog. You know what I'm saying? So, and I know we always say, you know what I'm saying, this is, we don't want to say it, but we know it. It's, it's considered a white America. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, by you being a black owner of your stuff, what do you think we will have to do as blacks to make this feel like it's a black America now instead of being a white America, in your opinion? Um, you mean creatively? Yeah. I'm um, telling our own stories and taking ownership of our own stories. I, I really just don't. Um, like when I see friends of mine who have potential of being writers and, and, and telling their own stories, they so quick to want to sell their story to Hollywood or something. Right. It's like to me, right. I think we can all learn from Tyler Perry, even though I'm not a fan of all of his work. I me respect either. him. I, don't think I feel the same way. Right. 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 Yeah, I mean, I, I love what he's doing because me he's too. taking crea- his own creativity. He's saying, okay, Hollywood's not going to give me a chance. I'm going to tell my own stories. And I think that's what we need to do because nobody can tell them better than we can. Um, and I think we have our own experiences, and there's a difference. And I feel like if I, I always tell my friends, especially when I know they're African American, tell your own story. Don't just write a concept and let somebody tell your story for you. It's important to take ownership of what we do, and that's, that's why key. I created my own production company. That's why I'm creating my own stories and giving other people opportunity to tell their stories. <laughs> Go ahead with that. Yeah, Ryan, Go ahead with that. Ryan, right, man. That's you know what I'm saying? Man. You want to talk to Deontay Bolden, man, is on Big Talk, Big Game. Call in now, man, if you watch it live or listening yep. in on audio. The number here is 404-603-0414. Once again, to call in and talk to Mr. Deontay, the award-winning Bolden, the number is 404-603-0414. Man, so I know what I'm saying? I heard, you know what I'm saying, like you said, the creativity about, you know what I'm saying, we need to be more creative and tell our own story. So what do you think it is? Like, why do you feel like people don't want to do that? You think it's because it's the money? They're looking on saying, okay, I ain't got enough money to do it, so I'm just going to say, uh-oh, we got a caller. Before we get into that, we got a caller. Let's see what this call is talking about. It was so deep. Yo, yo, this is Big Talk, Big Game. State your name, who you be? Yeah, I'd like to talk to Deontay. All right, all right. There he is. He's listening to you. Hello there, Deontay. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. I just wanted to know, are you going to, when you do your stories, are you going to, uh, are you looking for TV, movie, or what, what are you what are you doing? What's your ultimate goal? Um, yeah, I want to uh, have my own production studio where I can do plays, movies. Um, I, I love uh, stage production because I feel like I get that raw um, reaction from the audience. So I love stage and theater, but I do want to do films and TV as well. I have a lot of series. Um, as well, so I want to do you know a, a bunch of different things, and my creativity just flows in different areas. So you'll see me doing plays, movies, and and shows as well. So. Okay, and finally, what about your? Uh, are you going to act as well? Yeah, I haven't acted in anything that I've done yet. Um, even though I've been trying to put my stuff on the stage, I just like to direct because I'm also I want to make sure that everything goes the way I want it to. But I do have a series called The Price of Fame that I actually have a role set for myself and that I'm actually bringing back. I tried to film it years ago, but it didn't work out, but it's coming back. So, yeah, oh, good. Well, 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 keep pushing it, brother. I'm a fan. Hey, sta- hey, st- hey state your name, man. Let us know who you are, man. Uh, my name is Ross. I'm Deontay's buddy from L.A. Hey, uh, man, hey, L.A. in the hey. building. Stand up. L.A. in the building, man. Hey. What's up, Ross? I, I don't remember that voice. <laughs> that's a distinctive voice. Boy. Hey, Ross, you in radio, man? Like, it sounded like Donnie. I thought it was Donnie Simpson. I was like, hey. what's hey, Duke. Hey. Yeah. Hey, he called in like he was going to sound old boy off the board of the men. Did somebody say I sounded like Johnny Gill? 
<laughs> no, we didn't say Donnie Yu. We said Donnie Simpson. Donnie Simpson. Oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll take that one. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate you, man. Keep Thanks, tuning in, Bob. man. Subscribe appreciate to Big Talk, Big Game, man. All right, fellas. Good luck. Yeah. Appreciate it. That's dope, man. So um, back to your uh, book where you was uh, writing about yourself. Um, was it during or after you had to overcame like the death of your brother? Because I know that could be a hard subject. And with you saying that you wanted to take your own life, did you have to, you know what I'm saying, wait to get, like go through therapy or did you have a, like, yeah. what was the process um, for that? I think he- the healing process also came through writing the book as well. Um, you know, I never sat in front of a therapist, which I agree that I should and I probably will in the future. We all I feel should. like, you know, you know it, it's, th- it's much needed, especially in our African-American community. Yeah. We like to sweep things under the rug, but I think it's important to, you know, sit in front of a therapist and talk. But I did experience the healing process while writing the book um, mm-hmm. because I had my own mixed emotions. I think that's what took me so long to write the book because I actually started the process of writing the book in 2017, mm-hmm. but I didn't get finished to writing the book until 2019. Yeah, and that I was, was because I had to go through yeah. um, a lot of different emotions. And I ran away from the book many times. I was like, I'm not going to write this book. This is too deep. And then I started saying, well, I'm not going to put out the book because I don't want people to know my business. So you kind of go through that process, wow. but I just know that it's meant for someone else to read it and get their experience from it as well. That's interesting. Was it, was, it, was it anything that you was writing, sorry, <coughs> sorry, sorry, anything that you was writing that like triggered like a, a harsh memory that you was like, should I talk about this, man? Or? Yeah, it was the relationship with my dad. My dad and I, we hadn't had, we didn't have the best relationships. I had to learn how to forgive um, because my mom and dad divorced when I was four. And when my brother passed, um, I felt like my dad kind of neglected me a little bit um, and my needs. And I really wanted my dad to do that more. And I had this bitterness and unforgiveness that I had to let go. Um, And I didn't want to put that in the book because I didn't want to seem like I was um, talking ill towards my dad. But I also had to be truthful about how I felt and how I overcame that situation. Um, And I was afraid for him to read it. And um, I sent him the book and I was like, did you read it? And he never told me how he felt about it. But um, it was nothing in there to, you know, disrespect him. But I had to be truthful about how I felt uh, um, during the process. So that was hard for me. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. That's was this interesting. the first book? This yeah, this is the first book. That's Purpose Pain. I mean, that's your first ever book? Yes. Book right. Purpose wow. Pain. Hey, hey, wow. hey, hey, hold, hold up the book, man, so people can see, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying, what this book is, man. You know what I'm saying? So purpose, they can see the cover. Purpose Pain. I'm scared. Here, let me get, let me get that for you. Let me get for you. Man, that's just Hold up that book, man. Hey, man, look at that book, man. You know what I'm saying? That's Mr. Deontay Bolden himself. I think that differently able book, that's that's dope because I have an epileptic brother. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in public, folks act like they don't know how to treat him. They don't know how to approach him. Right. And, it, and if they do, like, school, for example, like, at home, your family, we, we like, we know what you're capable of. And in school, they tend to baby the special needs a lot. So, like, even though they can, when we see at home how they can process faster and progress and you know what I'm saying do more in school it's like they want to water it down and most folks don't know they just want to be treated how you being treated you right, right so right. I think that's dope you wrote it yeah. and, and both of these books are incredibly deep to be yeah. your first work of written literature of literature you know what I'm saying yeah and that's tough definitely man. able to special to me because just like I said it's about these four children they're going into middle school and they want to be popular they want to you know have friends mm-hmm. but they are often the center prank of everyone's jokes and laughter and they're frustrated and it's around christmas time and when most kids want gifts and toys these children they want to be normal they want to see life yeah. on the other side so they go on this magical journey of seeing life on the other side but when they get there they realize you know what i'm different but i make a difference you know that didn't bring me happiness and it's all about self-confidence and self-love and i think that's what we need to be that's teaching absolutely. our children right, um, right. Yeah, in the home to love and embrace who they are right uh, so we had another question or whatnot that commented uh Miss Talisa wanted to know. So would you say that writing is your therapy? Yes, writing is therapy. I think if I didn't find a passion for writing, I probably wouldn't be living right now. Um, because that was a way for me to express, you know, myself. Um, and really just kind of, you know, learn how to um embrace who I am. I think I found like that was my purpose and that was what God placed me on this earth to do. Sometimes we don't really find our purpose, and I think it's sad when someone leaves this earth and not find that purpose. But I found purpose through my pain and purpose pain, um, and that was the gift of writing. And I was able to express a lot of my emotions through writing. So, yeah, writing is definitely therapy for me. 
Right, all right, all right. There it is. There it is, man. Once again, man, this is Deontay Bolden, man. In the building, man. Yeah. Definitely kicking it with Big Talk, Big Game. Yeah, man, thank, man, thank we, you so much for sharing right, that, too, man. Right, that's, man. You know what I'm saying? Deep. Definitely, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Definitely thank yeah, you for absolutely. coming in and giving us this deep conversation because absolutely. sometimes people need this. Yeah. You know what and, and we're And we're you know? a podcast. I mean, we joke, we laugh, we have a good time, man. But, like, a lot of our stuff is actually centered around self-care mm-hmm. and, you know, just your mental well-being. We yeah. ask each other how we doing. You know, we... When we speak to people, um, we give the gift of laughter and entertainment through that way. You know what I'm saying? But it's always centered around, man. You all right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, How is everything? Right, right, and a lot of what right. you're talking about with Differently Able and your first book as well is, is dealing with, you know, just being okay after, you know, anything. Yeah. You know? Right, yeah, right, that's cool. Right. Self-care is the best care. You got to yeah, take care of so, so, so what's next for Mr. Deontay Bowden? You didn't did the play. You didn't did the book. You know, you didn't been a host. You actually got a podcast right yeah, I'm on podcast. DNA, podcast, DNA yeah. podcast you know what I'm saying yeah. yeah and um it's with me and my girls Jazz and Beloved and we just get together you know um Christianity has a negative connotation um a lot of times when people think because you're a Christian you're judgmental but we have a podcast where we just get on and we show love towards each other and we also talk about topics that people don't want to talk about and we just have a good time and we show that we're under construction too you know I'm not perfect you know um, you drive with me in the car you'll see I'm a Christian but I got my own right you know, the thing road rage <laughs> yeah but really but test so, your faith yeah <laughs> <laughs> we all struggle with no, something no. you know oh um, man so yeah we that's the podcast that we do and then I'm I also, like I said, I have my own award show coming uh, October 22nd of 2022. It's called the Bolden Awards. And I just really wanted to create an award show to uh, highlight people who are in the industry making bold moves while achieving greatness. I think uh, many times people are overlooked um, and uh, there's a lot of cliques and things like that. And I just want to create an award show where people can come together and celebrate each other's greatness and uh, network with each other and look not look at each other as competition. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There That's it is. excellent, man. There it is. There it is. Man, we got Deontay Bowler in the building, man, with Big Talk, Big Game, man. Once again, if you ain't know the number, you finna get it now, which is 404. 404. Once again, we're giving it to you again right now. The number of the Big Talk, Big Game is 404. 604. So, Deontay, you know what I'm saying? Before we let you get up out of here, man, we're going to do a little fun game. You know, I know you're a serious person. Man, but we like to have laugh and giggles a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, like you said, time to get loosened up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Definitely want to say, definitely see where your mind is at, you know, outside of business, okay. you know what I'm saying? So, we can play a game called Rapid Fire, so you just say the first thing that comes first to your thing head, you, man, don't think about it, right? Just, just, first just say it, you know what I'm saying? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying. So, you know what I'm saying. I'm 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 gonna start off with something. You know what I'm saying that you actually into. You know what I'm saying. Uh oh, we got another caller for right you. Right after this call. Right. <laughs> yo yo, this is Big Talk, Big Game. Yes sir, yes sir. I was calling to speak to Brother Deontay. I'm here. Because uh, I'm I'm you know I'm I'm Lorenzo Evans and oh, yeah. this brother is talented beyond what he said. I mean, he's humble when he talk about what he does, but I've seen his plays. Um, I've read his books and talking about good. These books are, what I like about them, it's a child book, but it can reach adults as well. Mm. And it's books that's wrote for adults to reach children. So um, the brother's talented and he's humble, but I, I'm impressed at the way he doing this for himself, but he want to invite everybody in. He's not selfish with it. And the Bible says those who give will be given back too. So I know he's going to be blessed and he may be doing podcasts and things now, but the red carpet is in the future and Tyler Perry may have stepped away and left a, a gap, but I believe he's got all the qualifications to fill that gap and be the next person that can have his own studio. So what do you say? Uh, about it? Thank you, thank you, hey, man. Lorenzo, thank you, man. Appreciate hey, man. the call, appreciate man. Your call, man. Appreciate the love, saying? man. Hey, appreciate the love, man. Tune in every Thursday. Big talk, big game. Subscribe, man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Be yep. blessed. Hey, take care, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. That's that's love, man. That's love, man. That's love. Know, you got people, you know what I'm saying, calling about you, you know what I'm saying. That's love. They got man. fans out here. You know man. what I'm saying. <laughs> so we so so we definitely gonna say gonna get into this game. You know what I'm saying. It's a little funny. You know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna, hit like I said, I'm gonna hit you with a question that you probably already we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just get a look. Just get a little closer yeah, to the. Uh, yeah, you can pick it up. Whatever you want to do, just you know what I'm saying. Just get, 
Just get a little closer to the mic, that's okay. all. Can you hear me now? There it is. Right, there it is. Favorite movie? Uh, Forrest Gump. Wow. wow. That's a good one. That's a good one. Wow. That's a first timer, though. Forrest Gump? Yes. yes. Wow. What's okay. your favorite scene in Forrest Gump? Uh, lots of box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> today is actually National Chocolate Day. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. today is actually Ooh, National Chocolate I Day. Mean, you know what I'm saying? Love Tom Hanks. Listen, my if they made a movie about you, who would play you? Michael B. Michael B. Jordan. There you go. Michael B. Jordan. Okay. Okay. Who, 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 who would you want to play your mom? Uh, oh, Octavia Spencer. Mm. Mm. That's that sounds like a good movie, y'all. Right? <laughs> and your That's dad. Deep. Who playing your dad? Forrest Whitaker. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's a good oh. movie. It's a star-studded movie. <laughs> right. You need a go star right. movie. Right. And That's you a good ass right. movie, for real. <laughs> I need to write that one. Star right. right. Let it go. Right, right. Are there any superstitions that you believe in? Uh, okay, I don't, I split the pole. Oh, so you don't split, split the pole? pole. You be believing that? I don't believe in superstition, but I just don't do it. I just walk around. So. Do you believe in Bloody Mary and Candy Man? No. Okay, okay. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah. Okay. okay. You think Bigfoot okay. real? No. <laughs> Favorite day of the week? Uh, Fridays. Okay, okay. Do you like? Summer fashion, fall fashion, winter fashion. Favorite fashion? Winter fashion. Winter fashion. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you rather parasail or skydive? Skydive. Your celebrity crush. Ooh. Celebrity crush. Um, I think Sinalathan is beautiful. Mm. Okay, mm. get on that. FMK. You know what that stands for, right? FMK. <laughs> Uh, tell me. Okay. Screw one, marry one kid. Oh, there you okay, go. <laughs> All right. So, these three, you don't, don't say, you just got to pick from these three. Iggy Azalea, Kim Kardashian, Scarlett Johansson. What a, what uh, a lot of <laughs> got, 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 throw, got throw, throw them on. Got to throw them on. F for Kim Kardashian. He went straight to the F. Uh, <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. We know so what who, she can what do. What was the other one? And uh, Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea. Uh, kill her. Yeah, kill her. <laughs> you you killing who? Iggy. Scar uh, Iggy and Mary Scarlett Johansson. I think she's beautiful. She is. Beautiful. Okay. okay. Plus she got that money. And when y'all get married, you're not going to find a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> don't have, just in case. Exactly. Two not. habits you want to break. Uh, well, I bite my nails a lot. That's a habit I want to break. And then, um, what is another habit? Uh, I tend to eat a lot when I'm uh, emotions, emotional. So, like, when I'm stressed out. So, that's another habit. So, mm -hmm. overeating and bite my nails. Do you watch a lot of movies? Yeah. Let's, what's your favorite Marvel movie? Um, I like The Avengers. The Avengers, the yeah. first Which one? Uh, I think it was the second one. The second one? The okay. Second one. Okay. okay. Best burger joint in Atlanta that you've been to? Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say best burger joint, period, because I like in and out in L.A. Oh, mm -hmm. ain't it the best? <laughs> ain't it Fat the burger. best? Fat burger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about here. I, know. <laughs> I ain't never ate it in and out. Man, I love L.A., man. I, I love ain't never ate it in and out. Man. Jesus. I, love I haven't it. found a good burger joint here. Y'all going to have to help me. I've been here for two years. Where are you so from? Well, originally I'm from originally from a Washington DC DMV area. Got it. Okay. So yeah. So okay. y'all gotta help me with the burger joint. Well, best city you ever visited? Los Angeles. Most definitely. I agree. Favorite comedian. Uh, I like uh well my favorite comedian, I like Damon Wayne. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That is Do you consider yourself an introvert or extrovert? Introvert, definitely. Introvert. Okay. okay. If you had to go on the first date, where would you go? I like the beach. So I would find what beach? I don't know about the beach here. It'll be in Florida because I can't find nothing around here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, if you if you had to go on a date here, here, what would I do? Um, what beach? Do y'all have beaches here? There's no beaches. There's no beaches. Oh, okay. There's no beaches. Um, so what would I do here? Don't uh, go to Lake Lanier. <laughs> right. You won't <laughs> come back. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, day here, I would do like an indoor skydiving because I have seen some Let's places. Go. Okay, that's cool. I, would do that. I just went indoor skydiving a couple weeks ago. That was cool. Oh, that was okay. pretty cool, man. That was pretty cool. Where, where would you like to visit outside of the country? I always said I wanted to visit Africa. I've never been to Africa before. Great. Okay. What's okay. your favorite song right now? Like what you got on? Re- if you were to call by yourself and you know you're gonna press repeat when it go off, what song is it right now? Um, I'm liking Bruno Mars. I like a lot of his stuff. Okay. Um, so um, okay. that leave the door open song. I kind of like oh, that. I'm gonna leave the door open. Bruno Mars. Would you, <laughs> <laughs> you reach back all the way back and slap your mama for a thousand dollars? Wow. Oh, oh, she oh, in the oh, 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 thousand dollars man. this ain't a whole lot of money your mama in the room man. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for a thousand to be a <laughs> what's the what's the price what, everybody got a price no, no, they, go. <laughs> <laughs> they got a ride together <laughs> <laughs> that ride home gonna be a thousand dollars so a million huh? <laughs> 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 now she gonna enjoy some of that million, so she probably <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes, yeah, she gonna need some bandages, ain't she? I, I got your mama. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Are you a sports fan? Uh, not as much. I don't get much into sports, but I mean, if it's on TV, I'll watch. I heard oh. about the World Series and all of that stuff. Yeah, oh, I'm, okay. I'm with you on that. I'm not into sports either. I'm into Eden. <laughs> I like me too. Let like me ask you this: <laughs> What was your your favorite game to play as a kid? Uh, I used to like the um, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When, when I was there, man, I couldn't picture this. <laughs> That's the first thing that came out. <laughs> Me too. He said it. I thought he was going to keep going. Hanging pictures on my wall. Yeah, so. What about y'all? What, what was y'all younger uh, childhood game? Y'all favorite childhood game? Video console or just game? Just a game? Just game, period. It, video console or outside playing? It doesn't matter. Super Nintendo. High and go seek. <laughs> Super Nintendo. High and go seek. Yeah. Super Nintendo, dog. High Super Nintendo. I hope nobody finds me. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 oh, Look at his evil eye. Those were the days. Those were Three the words days. to describe Deontay Bowden. Um, humble, confident. And uh, determined. Mm. There it is. There it is. That's Let me ask you one more question. That's a great combination. If you can relive any age in your life, what age would you want to relive? What year? Your favorite year? Mm, uh, probably when I was innocent and not worried about life. So maybe about five years old. About five? Mm. You going back to five? Yeah. Let me ask you this. If you could go back and tell younger Mr. Bolden anything, what would it be? Trust the journey, to trust the journey, because I feel like um, the younger me would have been overthinking it and thinking that everything had to work out for the best, but everything that I've been through in life has led me to where I am now, so trust the process. There it is. There it is. This is Deontay Bolden, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely appreciate him stepping by. You know what I'm saying? Kicking with Big Talk, Big Game. Once again, tell the people what's next for Deontay and how they can find you or watch what you do. Yeah, so next for me, I do have a film, short film that I um, am in post-production now called The Skin I'm In. I didn't get a chance to talk about it, so I have to come back and talk to y'all more oh about yeah, stuff like definitely. that. Oh, yeah, definitely. There we go. There we so, go. yeah, that's going to be released next year. Um, the Bolden Awards is coming. Um, my play production, tickets will go on sale again in December for Looking for Love and All the Wrong Places, and you can purchase both of my books. All the info is on my website, www.deontaybodenproductions.com. Say that website like one more time, loud and proud. www.deontaybodenproductions.com. Y'all can go in there, get all the information, the updates, purchase my books, tickets, and all of that. So, there it is, people. There it is, man. Deontay Bowden in the building, man. Deontay Bowden, man. Hey, once again, man, we appreciate you stepping by, man. You know what I'm saying? Taking the dumb, saying the time out your busy schedule. You know, and like we always tell all our guests, you know, any time that you want to just stop by, Come peek through, your man. head in here or whatnot, Promote even if we well. ain't got you scheduled or whatnot, you know, yeah. just say, you know what I'm saying? If you want to stop by and just say what up or just let us know what you promote. promoting, hey, let us know, man. I'll We're here, what, man. I bring a couple of cast members for, um, for my play. Let's do it. That'll work. There it is. There it is. There it is, man. Definitely bring it, man. Once again, it's Deontay Bolden, man, with Check Big Talk, out, Big y'all. Game, man. Check him out, man. Play coming soon to you in February, man. Tickets going to sell in December. 
definitely get your money right, you know what I'm saying? Because I know Christmas is coming around, but when you buy your gifts, think about Deontay Bowden as well. Damn, a Super Bowl. Tickets, man. Go to the play. <laughs> you yes. feel Self-care. me? Self-care. You Take feel care me? of yourself. <laughs> you feel Enjoy me? it. You, you can record the Super Bowl. I was just going to say. You know what I'm saying? And then, PBR, you know what I'm saying? Right. the Super Bowl. Right. Right. You once, know. Once again, Deontay, we appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? Much love to you, man. Much y'all. love to you, man. Much love to you. Hey, man, but we're going to get right on to the next part of our show, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to take a break for y'all real quick, man, before we get it in, man. But once again, this is Big Talk, Big Game. Stay Stay tuned, tuned. man, because we're coming back with some more good stuff. Gio. It's your boy E. Cal. Derail. And I go by the name of Lee. What up? Man, we back in the building again, man. It's that time. It's that time. It's that time. It's that time. It's that time, it's that time for. It's time for the rank. It's time for the rank with L E E Lee. With L E E Lee. Once again, it's time for the ring. We're going to move straight through this, man. You know what it is. If you have, if you don't know, now you know. I'm going to give you a topic, scenario, situation, and I want you to rank them based off your preference, what you feel, how you feel about it. Best to worst, or le- worst to best, whatever it is. So today is Halloween Thursday. For me, it's the last Ooh. Thursday before Halloween. So we're going to talk once again about some scary stuff, all right? Okay. This time, we're talking about the scariest place. Imagine spending the night here. The scariest clinic. place to spend the night. Damn. The ghost baby. Yeah, all the souls of those. Easy breezy. <laughs> First one. I don't even know what order it is because I just did this. Okay. The basement of a KKK establishment. No. Damn. Man. The basement of a KKK establishment. I mean, that ain't. Hey, that's just one of the options. Go no, here. What you doing here, boy? boy. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you might just play Uncle Tom real quick and just be like, yes, sir, master. I don't know what you're going to do. What you going to do? <laughs> so, some people, you know, are, for our white listeners, it may not be a problem. <laughs> 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 Shout out to our white listeners, too. Hey, no problem with next that. one. Your baby mama crib. For some of y'all, that's a problem. That's yeah, your ex. That, 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 that is a problem for some <laughs> You mess around, wake up in your ex-girlfriend house, your ex-boyfriend house. Your baby mama, if you don't know, this peanut. Remember peanut? Remember peanut? <laughs> oh, no. Woo! I'm talking go. about scary places to spend the night. Next oh, one. Hold on. Hit that. Scary. Hit that one more time. He got on. Hit that. Oh, shit. I slept good. You crazy for that head in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Your ex boo crib. <laughs> Next place. Of course, the cemetery. Hell yeah, oh, that's number one. Scary man. places to uh, spend the night. Man. Cemetery. Damn. And man. an old hospital or insane asylum. Oh, no. The scariest <laughs> place. <laughs> I want y'all to rank the scariest place. Rank them. Number one. Insane asylum outfit. <laughs> no, no. Why? Ain't that no why? 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 Why you want to say that? Man, I done seen too many of them ghost uh, shows, and when they go down, yeah, it be crazy. I told you them ghosts for real, dog. Man, I told you. I told you them ghost. spirits and ghosts, boy. And then number two, the cemetery. Most definitely, I'm not going now. I'm not going now. And then. Baby, now nah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta revamp my whole list. Number one, baby mama grill. <laughs> Woo, he's 
switched it up. He switched it up. Bro, that's terrible. If I wake up now, I must not know what I did last night. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. That's then, true. ain't no telling how many missed calls from my <laughs> wife. I done ignored. <laughs> he said, ain't no excuse in the world you can give that's forgiven. And if she say, I ain't even tripping. I forgive you. We all human. We all make mistakes. That's scary as hell. <laughs> Who's capping? That's right. scary as hell. <laughs> that is so, scary. Yeah, that's my list. Baby that mama, is scary. insane asylum, cemetery, white folk spot. I'm a, uh, well, baby mama know. house is going to be last because I ain't got them problems. Or ex. Or it can be an ex. Ex-girlfriend ex house. Ex still going to be last, you know what I'm saying, because I ain't got them problems. Nah, you, know, if you, you got them problems at the house with, if you wake up at the ex-girlfriend house. But see, I I'm, I won't be as scared actually being there. I'm just going to be scared of the reaction. I'm not going to actually be oh, okay. scared I got what you're saying. I got what you're saying. being there. Either way, it's the result you know of being there. So if I'm scared actually being somewhere, it's definitely going to be the... Uh, <laughs> The word no more. The real don't be like Joe. It's insane asylum, yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So, so, so number one is insane asylum. Yeah. What's number two? I'm gonna say number two. See, number two is tough because I would say the cemetery, but see, people sleep out outside when they're at their home, so that's basically just being outside. I ain't never seen nobody sleep you know at saying? no cemetery. You still at a cemetery? That's basically being outside. I mean, but you know yeah, what, what, what but, you think? So I'm gonna say, you ain't seen Thriller video? I know you have. <laughs> I'm gonna say KKK is number two, and then Cemetery is number three. That's what I'm gonna say because you gotta realize KKK dog, they could really do something to you. Sleeping in the cemetery, you really ain't nobody really gonna be able to do nothing to you. I'm with you on I that. I feel like I feel like I'm safe because they don't want to come in there either. You know what I'm saying? Not no cemetery at night like that. So I feel like I'm good. But that KKK, you in the basement? Oh no! I'm, but it's I'm, the KKK. Oh no! What they gonna do? What no, you no, mean? No, what no, no. You at the KKK house? Right, you in their house in their basement. All right, that's still last. You got them hands, boy. We. What's your ranking, Lee? Uh, I'm with you. I'm with you with your logic, Darrell. For the for the first time, I'm with you and your logic on this. Like, uh, <laughs> with the I, baby mama. The yeah, you are the baby mama. I'm not worried about that. At least it's very understanding. Uh, <laughs> 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 Please, baby, baby, please. Hey, uh, hey, he yeah. he got pictures that are blackmailed. <laughs> I woke up at my baby mama house. I might as well be single. We made it there by the work. It's over. It's now. over at that point. Listen, I don't I'm know. I, my ass. I think I think the KKK. I don't know how I'm gonna talk my way out of that. Um, so I might have to put, put KKK one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ooh, ooh. KKK because I feel, I'm like you. I feel like the cemetery. I mean, I might be more scared of like an animal or something coming through. Right, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, I'm right, outside. But right. what you gonna think if an animal start nibbling on your ankle at a cemetery? <laughs> ah, they yeah, me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, the <laughs> cemetery. <laughs> then I'm gonna go with the old hospital. I mean, hey, I got a roof over my head. And then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the ex. So Lisa said, asylum, KKK, cemetery, and ex house. All right, one more. Well, I'm gonna do this one too. All right, so we still on the on the topic of fear. We got some real world things that are scary. Some real shit that can happen to you that's scary. Number one, you get caught slipping, Ooh. get robbed, <laughs> getting robbed, <laughs> and I take a double burger with cheese. I say it with cheese, motherfucker. You almost got. Can that. I have a double burger with fries? <laughs> 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 We're supposed to be brothers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say after that? Are you trying to be smart? Are you trying to kick knowledge? Beep, 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 beep. Oh, you a baller, huh? You a baller? Then give me that shit. Better than the goddamn police. Getting caught slipping, getting robbed. Does that scare you? Number two. I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> the go, one. Going to jail. <laughs> no, 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 no. Going to prison. Prison, I mean. Going to prison. I said you. I say I, I like you, you. <laughs> and I want you. Now we can do this the easy way or the hard way. That booty. I like booty. Shit. Prison. Shit. Going to prison. Number three. The fear. <laughs> fear of failure. Got deep with you. That's why he 
<laughs> the fear of failure. What's more scary? Getting robbed. Going to prison. That nigga look like he hurt. The fear of failure. That nigga look like he hurt, hurt. And last but not least, PPP fraud. <laughs> Getting caught up in PPP fraud. Last on my list. <laughs> Your biggest fear. Like him. Man, my Number thing. one, booty warrior. Going to prison. Listen, it's a whole nother world in prison, man. It's a whole nother world. I'm hearing trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you, man. Yeah. I agree with you, man. I agree. Ain't that worse than hearing a prison story in jail. <laughs> Woo! I agree, dog. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's, that's tough. So, I yeah, agree. Prison. That, uh, failing. Failing number two. Okay. Mm. Mm. Failure number two. Okay. Number three, getting caught lacking, cuz. You get caught lacking, you out of here. Getting robbed. Yeah, now ain't worried about that PPP fraud. <laughs> PPP. Okay, I'm going to say, say my first one is definitely going to prison. You know, I definitely don't want that on no, wish that on nobody and don't not myself my either. Booty. You know what I'm saying? I definitely don't wish that on Ain't nobody. Raped. <laughs> I, I would say getting robbed is number two. That was almost you know, the picture. Could that getting robbed, man, could really turn into something else. Yeah. You think you're going to get robbed, nigga. It could turn into a death. You yeah, know what I'm sure. saying? All you got to do is comply. You know I heard. Yeah, just give it up. Just you give it up. Saying. I heard. See, I'm a type of guy, you know what I'm saying? If I'm getting robbed, I'm going to ask him, nigga, what are you gaining from taking $10 I ain't doing me? all that. Go on, take it, bro. See, and that's why I'm going to get shot. Don't be tough. <laughs> yeah, go on, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm going to get shot. I'm going to let you know from experience. Don't be tough. I'm going to say PPP is number three. Really? Yeah, because failure is last because I'm going to tell you, because failure is just a part of life. That just makes me even stronger. When I fail something, I know once I fail it, I, it won't happen again. I ain't okay. failing that same thing again. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm definitely, you know what I'm saying, going to make sure that, that, you know what I'm saying, if I fail something, that ain't going to be the end of all ends. That's just going to make me even stronger because you got doubters out there that already think you're going to fail anyway. You know, so that's what I'm thinking about. So that's my order. Yeah, I'm uh, my order is pretty much the same. Prison, <laughs> prison number one. Prison number one. Who trying to get robbed of what I what I created, what I made, what I gained? Yeah. You want to rob me? That's some bullshit. But you can have it because I I, I sure, care about my life baby. more. You it's know sure, what I'm mean? saying, baby? So yeah, pr- but who trying to go to prison? Right. Nigga, nah, right. I'm too pretty for that. <clears throat> right. So prison, nah, <laughs> nah. Robin, Robin number two. <laughs> Um, I'm like you with the failure thing. Like, I feel like you only fail if you stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. The failure is, is, is relative to what you think. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, yep. like you yep. said, you can turn it into a win. Shit, like Deontay Boulder said, you can spin the trauma into a positive. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, how you perceive it is really the failure. No, can't nobody right. say that right. you fail. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Like, but, but you. Exactly. Right. So, that's right. all in your head. So. Right. Um, yeah, so PPP loan, I'm really not worried about that. That was just funny to do because you know, <laughs> I like doing shit like that. Oh, Let me get man. the music real quick. And we're going we gonna to get out of here with that one. So, um, yeah, man, I appreciate Tara Lynn got, the, got her ranking from the first one. What she got? Insane Asylum, Hospital, KKK Basement, My Baby Daddy House. <laughs> then the cemetery. <laughs> my Baby Daddy House. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's Halloween, man. So, you know, I had to make them Halloween-oriented. And another aspect of Halloween is what the kids do, what you used to do when you was a kid. Y'all remember being a kid? Y'all ever go trick-or-treating? And I used to look, I used to look forward to that shit. Yeah. Man, a lot of times I used to look forward to that shit. I was just around, I'm, man. My brother and them used to look uh, <clears throat> for white neighborhoods. I'm looking so forward to it. That's what you do. I'm, so I'm you get forward the, to get it the, now. Get the big Snickers. <clears throat> Pause. All right, so this time we're talking about... <laughs> so... When you go to them houses, you say trick or treat, what you get in return? Candy. So I got songs about candy. Now, of course, I could have did the basic candy, you know. Cameo, I love that song. You know, you got New Edition Candy Girl. You got Candy Rain, but I'm going to do a couple other ones. So out of these, I'm going to give you your favorite. I want you to give me your favorite candy song. Starting with this one. Lollipop. Uh No, no, no. Yeah, I'm so sweet, so sweet, so sweet, so sweet, so 
Taffy, Tusty Roll, Lollipop. Three? We only gonna do three. I got a million of them. Oh, let's see here. I'm trying to think what, which one was actually hitting the hardest when it Lollipop, came out. Man. Lollipop is last for me. What? Tussie Roll was hitting hard when it came out. I'm gonna say Tussy Roll, then Lollipop, uh, Laffy Taffy. That's my order. Tussy Roll, here? then Lollipop. I mean, Tussy hey. Roll, Laffy Taffy, Lollipop. I'm going to say Laffy Taffy, Tootsie Roll, uh, Lollipop. Then lo- no, 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 no. Laffy Taffy, Lollipop, then Tootsie Roll. Laffy Taffy. All because. <laughs> all because my ex, my worst ex, her mama was cool with the 69. Boy. What? So fuck them. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Damn it. Oh, All the positivity from this episode. Right, just, just right. <laughs> What's your so rank of Mr. Lee? Give me, give me, hmm, give me Laffy Taffy. <laughs> give me Laffy Taffy, because it was wild times when Laffy Taffy came out. And then get me Vegas Nights and all that. I remember them days. So give me Laffy Taffy. Give me, ooh, Tootsie Roll, though. <laughs> That's just, that, up, 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 let's go. Let me see the dirty rope. Cotton candy, green, gold. That part right there. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Damn, I love lollipop. Though. Give me Tootsie Roll then lollipop, man. <laughs> All because of Darrell B. Boppin'. And that is the rank of the evening, baby. That's the rank that's the rank that's the rank that's the rank You know what I'm saying? But before we get out this show, you know what I'm saying? Before we got to get rich music coming in live here in a second, man, I definitely want to get this. Many verses out the way, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I think I got some heavy hitters for y'all today, man. Definitely think I got something that's going to make y'all think, you know what I'm saying? So today, like you said, this is the Halloween edition, you know, definitely the Halloween edition. And I want to have someone that has something to do with Halloween in their name. I got Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy. That's That's a good little flip. Okay. Versus... Plies. Trick Daddy versus Plies. What Plies got to do with Halloween? Who's Halloween? I didn't, I didn't say Plies has something to do with oh. Halloween. <laughs> I didn't say Plies has something to do with Halloween. I just said, you know what I'm saying? Trick Daddy has something to do with Halloween. Trick Daddy versus Plies, both out of Miami. We definitely going to see exactly who y'all would think will win hmm. that versus. Pick them right now. 305. Who you got? Uh, yeah, I like, I, man, I can go either way, man. I'll be real with you, I can go with either way. Uh, give me, uh, shit, I like Plies too, man. Give me Trick Daddy, give me Trick Daddy. You know what, I'm going to go with Plies myself, you know, try to throw it off, I'm going to go with Plies myself. We got Trick Daddy up first. 
What did I say? Trick daddy. Or you said you trick, said trick daddy. Man, this a talk. This a push for me. You know what I'm saying? This a push. But give me so we don't say. So we're gonna see what trick daddy has to offer first. Here's trick daddy. Maybe because I'm a thug. I hated this song. This song. Like whoa. Give it to me, bring it here. Don't stop, girl. Shake your here. Here we go. Live. Live. Song one. Here. Yeah. We off the chain for the whole year. I don't know what I wanna call this bit. Big heart to be a hard bit. Ain't it been on record? Ain't it been recorded a bit right now in the record? I'm on the blood twice. Fuck a shooter, I'm my own shooter. What to say? All this ice, I'm my own shooter. Hey! Six loggers and they all jewel. Flies. Risk call. Rise is hilarious on IG. Can you ever follow his IG? Guess it's safe to say, nigga, I spunch a budget on it. He always talk. I saw the one when he was talking about the uh, Thanksgiving leftovers, how long it was to last. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guess I'm riding around the body of all this last hour. I got a Delta go to house. Daddy call it bike. That little pussy got some power. Born broke, but I'm a diary. Lonnie Ford, nigga, counterfeit. Here we go, Trick Daddy, song number two. I got plies, 1-0. Got the Phone, hit me up for some of that thug. Yeah, that's like that. Hit him in the chest with me. My time. My time is getting in the head. But buddy roll, y'all. Check it out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
hard work. Plies, shawty, that's song three for three. Who you got so far? Oh damn, where I'm at? That's song number three. I had it. I had it one one. Give me trick on this. I got trick two one. Here we go, trick daddy. Song number four. Oh, see, low green. That's what we call. Oh God for the thugs too. Song. We got song number one. Take it to the house versus Rich Carlton. We got I'm a thug versus please excuse my hands. I got I'm a thug. We got Nan Nigga versus Saudi. Give me Nan Nigga. We got In the Wind versus Hypnotize. Give me In the Wind. And we got Let's Go versus Plenty of Money. Uh, give me uh. 
I, th- I feel like we only did four with that. We did five. That's five. You gave me. You gave us five. Take it to the house, Risk Carlton. Who you say, Risk Carlton? Yeah. I say. T- I say, Risk Carlton. Yeah. We got I'm a thug. Please excuse my hands. I got I'm a thug. Okay. We got Nan nigga Salty. I gave it to Nan nigga. We got In the Wind Hypnotized. I gave it to In the Wind. And then we got Let's Go Plenty of Money. I got Let's Go. I'm gonna go with Plenty of Money. I got Trick 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 one for me three two. Trick one for me three two. But man, that's the versus man for y'all today. Trick Daddy versus Plyer. So if that versus was to happen, who would you pick based on them five songs, man? We definitely appreciate everybody, you know what I'm saying, and definitely tuned in, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely each and every Thursday. Woo! Big Talk Big Game is yes, here they every Thursday. Game. Y'all have a safe days, Halloween you know day, huh? safe Halloween. night. You feel me? You feel me? And if you want, you can catch Big Talk Big Game at the bonfire. Yeah. It's Sunday, you already know what's Ooh, going down. So you 10 p.m. You already know what's going on. We will be in the building representing. Again, the Bonfire ATL. Check out Big Talk, Big Game. We will be there Sunday night, late night. If you can stay up past the curfew, we going to be there, babe. You feel me? And Do you Saturday, feel me? Saturday, you already know I got a show. I got a show. EJ I out here working. Show, huh? So if you. If you Trying to tune in to the show. We got live tickets. We got online tickets. So if you want to view it from the comfort of your home, you can do that. Hit us up in our DMs at Big Talk Big Game. Let us know, and we will get with you. And yes, make sir. sure you subscribe to Big Talk Big Game on YouTube. Most definitely. Make sure you subscribe. Oh, it takes two minutes, two seconds, however you want to do it. Just click subscribe. Once again, this is Big Talk Big Game. This is your boy Derail. And I go by the name of Lee. What up? Hey, man, we're going to let this music in the background ride as we ride on out. Stay tuned. Peace. And you says, people. I got plenty of money. And bring that true sermon. That's what we call. And God for the thugs, too.